defenseless because there's nothing to defend. So again, I just use the example of Jesus, you know, they seem to bring false witnesses, pay false witnesses, and, and all these charges of bargain. He was silent. I mean, he, he had nothing to defend, nothing to promote. Um, his teachings and all of the seeming healings that were around him were a testimony to the divine spirit and it wasn't a need to, you know, defend anything. But I have an argument about that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he never made an investment in this reality. So how could, why would you defend something you invested in? Not <laughs> against. I mean, he didn't struggle through school, he didn't struggle through high school, he didn't struggle through college. He didn't play the corporate game. He didn't, he didn't play the game. I don't think you read the Jumanji book. You find that Jesus had to go through the same trials and temptations as everybody else. Uh, it, he wouldn't be a very useful uh, role model either if he just was born uh, perfect. Uh, how do you relate to something like that, you know? <laughs> like, oh, great, you were born perfect and we got an immaculate conception and, you know, yeah, great. If I was born that, I would do it. But just because 
the ego projected out of the cosmos of God and mind and space, it is forgivable. It is believable. And um, this is where the teachings of the Course vary from, we might say, traditional teachings on forgiveness. Traditional teachings on forgiveness would say, you did this terrible thing. I've got eye witnesses, I got it on video tape now, I've got it on DVD. Uh, don't try to tell me that you didn't do it. I caught you in the act, I got all the evidence. But I was kind of on my heart because I'm such a spiritual person and I'm so holy, I'm going to pardon you. And, and what the Course is saying, that is not forgiveness. That's saying it, it really is there and you get a terrible thing. Now you just focus, focus and pretend, you know, that it's, you're as white as snow. What the Course is saying is that when you have a grievance against anybody, it's your own misperception. You're still holding on to ego thoughts about yourself, about your brother and sister, and you're completely misperceiving the situation. And so, when you forgive, you're really letting yourself off the hook. You're letting go of your own misperception. You're not just doing a kind deed for somebody else, hmm. uh, kind of blessing them for this terrible thing that they did. You're actually saying, I was mistaken at what I perceived. So these ideas are really important in the sense of really coming to a true experience of forgiveness. Because forgiveness is all you give to yourself. You're always just letting go of a misperception and learning a, a true and real way to look at upon the world that's, uh, that doesn't hold on to grievance anymore. Did you enjoy Is the course of that? <laughs> yeah, I think that's a lot of fun. It just ends with that in one line uh, thing. Can you get to a point where, where you realize that um, you are capable of, of taking sides or are capable of like, judging somebody as guilty or wrong or whatever, then it's pretty obvious that, uh, you know, you wouldn't be a very good juror. <laughs> and actually, if you get called for jury duty, you have to get interviewed. <laughs> and uh, that interview is a great opportunity to, to provide a witness and testimony to where your mind's at. You know, if you're at a point where you cannot um, judge a brother or a sister and pronounce them guilty, you have to say that in the interview. And uh, you are not going to get picked. <laughs> you are the jury. You make a little mistake. <laughs> I was just going to say thank you for asking that question. I just had that happen to me this week, and I couldn't figure out. I was, I was concerned that um, I, was, I was a little concerned about um, having to sit on this jury and, and make that judgment. Um, fortunately, I didn't have to, but thank you for, for answering that. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I know that this world is an illusion, but isn't it possible to find joy in material things without becoming attached, such as, you know, a sense that you can see the creative force of God in a sense that no happiness and joy and it be perfectly fine. Or, um, I don't know what else. Or, watch snow falling or whatever. That's part of the if you look at it as, you know, part of the creative force of God, it's impossible to find happiness in that. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I, back in the 1990s, I had a group of people like following around, following around like, like a flock of little students or hens or whatever. And, and they, one time I was in uh, Denver and uh, the snow was falling and it looked like one of those curious and nice things, you know, with snow on everything and everything. And we were out on the walk and the uh, student, she was like, oh, it's so beautiful. And then she had this look of shame on her face, like she had done something uh, wrong. She had a look of me with this look of shame. And I just smiled at her and I just smiled and said, it is beautiful. The beauty I'm talking about comes from non-judgment. Uh, it's like there's a, there's a workbook left under the chorus that all things be exactly as they are. Uh, so free. And what that means is when you allow your mind to drift into this beautiful natural state of non-judgment, that, from that perspective, we might
might say that the Holy Spirit, everything is beautiful, like the rain feet of the sun. Everything is beautiful. Now that's very different from, from judging something specifically that is beautiful. People are asking that, like with the sunset, you know, isn't it okay to feel joy watching the sunset? And I said, yeah. And I enjoy, uh, feel the same joy in the, you know, in the junkyard. Or, uh, I was always down in uh, Argentina, and they don't have any pollution controls on all the vehicles. The city, the city of, uh, I don't know how many millions of people were in the city, uh, an enormous city, with cars and buses and trucks and smoke flying everywhere. And I was, did 19 consecutive course of miracles gatherings down there in the city. So I had a camera and sometimes an hour or more to each place that I would go to. And I'm just in the woods, so as we're sitting in traffic, um, crawling along with a big bus comes by and all this black soot blows in out and I have fun with everything, I guess so. And, and I think I'm, Thank you. 